I'm Dr. Greg Ellis, and we're talking about aging and disease. Now, everybody needs to be concerned about their age and the fact that they're going to get diseases, particularly as they age. And my group of baby boomers, I'm the second year, 1946 was the first year I was born in 47. We're all going to start hitting 65 next year. Now, 80% of all cancers occur in people whose age is greater than 55. So there is something to do with this aging process and disease rates. And as I described in the earlier video, this has to do with three things, three ideas which are integrated. One is the glycation theory of disease and aging. The second is the insulin theory of aging. And then third is the mitochondrial theory of aging. Now mitochondria are powerhouses inside the cell and they supply all of our energy. And it's very important to maintain them and have them be strong and of the highest possible quality. How do these three work together? Well, glycation is when proteins are attacked by glucose or blood sugar molecules and that binds to them and they actually form and glue together, one next to the other. A whole chain reaction forms, gluing your body together. And we know, for example, that now, we believe that cholesterol was the cause of heart disease. In this paper, let's see if we can make this clear. There you go. Advanced glycation. A Novel Outlook on Atherosclerosis. <clears throat> so it's been believed that cholesterol was the cause of heart disease. Many physiological insults have been postulated as initiation factors in atherosclerosis, including problems with blood fats, presence of infectious agents, uremia, environmental and dietary toxins, long-term medication, and mitochondria and mechanical damage following clinical intervention. Perhaps the best candidate for instigation of atherosclerosis, however, are advanced glycation end products. So there it is. The thing has come full circle for us, and we now know that one of the diseases that we thought we had a solution for, we don't. Have a, we didn't have it. We, we do have a solution for it, but we certainly did not all along. We were blaming it on the wrong thing. And that was the cholesterol theory of heart disease. So now when we integrate the three issues, glycation, glycation affects mitochondria. It disrupts them. It poisons them. It leads to their death, which in turn can lead to your own cell death. And then the insulin theory of disease. Insulin is released from the pancreas in response to a glu glucose challenge. So when you eat carbohydrates and you digest them to glucose, then what you get is an insulin response at that point. So insulin is a bad news bear. And insulin and glucose are both implicated in the aging process. We know from a great deal of research that has been done in calorie restriction over the years that when we reduce calories that people consume, this significantly reduces their exposure to insulin and glucose, which is a good thing. Some of the animal models have been increasing their lifespan by 30 to 60 percent. This would translate to an additional 20 to 40 years for a human if they could do calorie restriction, which I don't believe they can. The key, however, is to reduce the exposure to glucose and insulin. We can do that through the mechanism of a low-carbohydrate or restricted carbohydrate diet. So that's why that diet is going to be the best possible choice to help us reduce our chances of getting these different diseases. So you can see how all three of these things work together. Glycation, insulin, mitochondria. They're all very much involved. The overwhelming amount of research identifying these processes as the cause of disease are solid. They've been around for a long time. So to ignore the idea that we know it's causing these diseases is foolhardy. It just doesn't make any sense at all. 
So at whatever stage of your life you are, you can begin to see the kind of preventive things that you can do to avoid getting diseases of aging because they can get pretty nasty. Particularly this is true of the neurodegenerative diseases that are arising as a result of glycation and loss of mitochondria, which we're losing because of glycation, and then the insulin impact. Now there's another thing that goes on inside the cell I've mentioned before, it's called autophagy. And that's when the body releases something called proteases that go in and eat up the damaged mitochondria or other damaged parts of the cell. And autophagy is diminished by exposure to insulin. It's reduced. It's increased under calorie restriction, under the sense of starvation. It'll increase its activity and become much more active, helping the body rid itself of these damaged proteins. And I use the term altered proteins. I mean, the shape and the conformation of these proteins is very important to their functionality. And the glycation process actually causes alterations in the shape. As glucose is degraded in the cell to its final fuel, there's a pathway that it goes through with 11 steps to it. About halfway down that pathway, it reduces something, produces something called methylglyoxal. Now, methylglyoxal is a glycating agent, and it's 20 to 50,000 times more toxic than the glucose itself. And that creates all kinds of problems in the cell, including reactive oxygen species. So you can see how all these things are tied together, and they're impacting seriously on our health. And we know this. There's not a question as to this anymore. There's no sense speculating on it. So now that's the opening introduction to the disease process and aging and how it's affected. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.